Located between the Italian and the French coast lies an island that often gets forgotten next to its famous neighbor Sardinia, but isn't any less stunning. With its incredibly diverse nature and a long history influenced by France and Italy, this place is a little world for itself. We were about to visit the so-called European Caribbean for the third time and we knew it would be a trip to remember once again. Although some unexpected things happened. Come along with us. Welcome to Corsica. There's no van trip without pretty much loading all your belongings into your vehicle. At least that's what it feels like. After loading Bumblebee and making sure everyone was on board, we made our way down south. Excited for what was about to come, our plan was to drive to Italy and to take an overnight ferry, as it felt like the most efficient and comfortable travel option for us. We usually really enjoy our ferry crossings. It feels like you're on a mini cruise where you can hit the dance floor, jump in the pool, eat in one of the restaurants or have a drink at the bar. You can definitely have a fun time on the sea. The feeling of traveling again after almost a year was indescribable. This trip would be one last taste of summer and adventure before spending the cold winter months at home. And here we were, back to Napoleon Bonaparte's land to make this van trip one of the most beautiful ones so far. It is so easy to fall in love with this island, and so did we two years ago, when we first visited Corsica. In fact, we were so blown away by the beaches, the little villages and landscapes at first, that we came back just a few weeks after to see more of it. Beautiful gorges, natural swimming pools, waterfalls and mountain peaks. And now the time just felt right. The first example of its diversity was crossing the island from the east to the west coast. Within just a few hours we watched the sunrise by the coast, drove on curvy roads through the mountains, passed old stone villages and made our way over bumpy tracks a picturesque beach with perfectly clear water. It almost felt surreal to be there and we were so happy to be back. So we go through this cliff all the way around it and we hope after that we can reach the place we want. So we came from over there can see the top of the man There is no better way to shake off the tiredness of the journey than to walk by the sea. After every corner, we were surprised by the landscape and eventually we even found some natural rock pools. Listen to that sound. So peaceful sound of happiness.
Even after just a few hours on the island, we were already blown away by its colors. The contrast of the beautifully blue water, the sky turning orange, and finally witnessing the first sunset of the trip. That's why we came back. Even though Corsica is the fourth largest island in the Mediterranean, I think it might still be underrated. You get beaches like in the Caribbean in the middle of Europe and if you're not into the sea, then there are plenty of hikes inland to waterfalls, visits to typical Corsican villages and much more. One thing that Corsica is not short of are definitely beaches. There are around 200 of them on the island, so whether you're looking for a secluded cove or a beach close to a village, there's something for everyone. The water is honestly as clear as it gets and you can pretty much find any shade of blue somewhere around the coast. If you like to explore and find some hidden gems, it's important to know that Corsican roads are, well, improvable. Often the access to the beach ends up in a bumpy dirt track, which can make you sweat quite a bit if you don't have a four-wheel drive. Trust me, we know what we're talking about, especially if you're traveling with a car or a van. But in conclusion, I can say that it was always worth it to take the bumpy road. Like they say, difficult roads often lead to beautiful destinations. Hello from very windy Corsica. Yeah. <laughs> we decided to make a chill day today and stay in this spot where we slept because the wind is just so strong that to whichever beach in the area we go it will not be enjoyable and as soon as you come out of the water you will just freeze <laughs> or like be really cold. So. Uh, it's really too windy and it doesn't get any better today. So we decided to stay and have a chilling day in our <laughs> spot, which is something that we barely do. <laughs> yeah. so, and as the weather gets better tomorrow and we don't want to leave the area before to visit um, a really known place here, we also want to enjoy it. Uh, so we're gonna stay until tomorrow and then the day after we go. <laughs> Actually we are in a spot right now next to the sea. We can even see Sardinia because it's really in front of us. <laughs> yeah. yeah and actually there is some people who can kite surf there. Yeah yeah it's perfect for that. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do kite surf <laughs> or wind surfing. <laughs> so we need to stay here. Yeah, but it's really cool because yeah, we can see the sea, we can see those islands in front of Corsica, then La Maddalena Island and Sardinia, the main, mainland, the main island. So it's, and it's really secluded because not a lot of people are driving by here to go to the beach today. It's pretty cool and we can still get a tan, of course with the head. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, we're gonna enjoy a bit. We're gonna have a chilling day, cool. We're gonna take our time to do the stuff. Yeah. 
When we travel with the van, our time to go back home is often set. But still, it is so important to slow down a bit and don't drive hundreds of kilometers daily. Staying more than one night in those places by the beach gave us the energy we needed to enjoy the next days even more. And the most amazing thing is that we meet a lot of other van lifers and campers all the time. We share past stories and adventures with each other and we talk sometimes even for hours. That's what we love. Yes, we didn't see that coming. But let's go back a bit. Hello. Good morning. Here we are, walking towards Rocapina Beach. It's one of the most known beaches in the west side of Corsica and we're gonna do a small hiking trail that will take around one and a half hours it's gonna start from the beach and it's gonna end on the beach and then we're gonna enjoy a little bit the water One of our favorite things to do when in new places is going for a hike and getting to know the area better. Rocapina is perfect for that. The short but steep hike gives you a breathtaking view over the bay and down the coast. It is definitely worth the effort. The higher up we were, the more stunning the view started to be. Rocapina lies on the way between Sarten and Bonifacio, in the southern part of Corsica. Through the years, the sea, wind and weather formed the granite stone high over the beach to a shape that looks like a sleeping lion watching over the area. But apparently, the area was not only popular for hikers. Parachute lovers climb up the hill over and over again to fly down to the beach and make the most of this stunning place. After enjoying this beautiful scenery from above, we couldn't wait for a refreshing dip in the perfectly clear water. And then this happened. After the initial shock of having an octopus wrapped around my ankle wore off, we took a closer look at this special animal. We were so mesmerized by this creature and its graceful moves and beauty. 
It's not every day that you can swim with an octopus in such a special place, so we made the most of it and enjoyed every moment. It was clear to us that this was one of the most beautiful places on the island. In the midst of the green, untouched nature and the blue of the sea, it feels as though you're somewhere far away from everything else. Sheltered by rocks, with hundreds of meters of soft white sand and crystal clear water, Rocapina is the dream for beach and nature lovers. It truly is a little corner of paradise. Besides the beaches, Corsica has much more to offer. A must-visit is Bonifacio, the oldest town of the island. It used to be a medieval fortress and is built on a cliff, which certainly provides for an impressive appearance. Besides the stunning location, the old town has many cute little paths to wander around and get lost in, or to simply enjoy the spectacular view. If you want to visit just one city or town in Corsica, this is the one. You can even see Sardinia and take a day trip there, or to the Lavezzi Islands, which are also nearby. If you want to feel the true Corsican spirit, Sardin is the place for you. It's said to be the most Corsican of Corsican towns and actually used to be a medieval fortress. Walking through the narrow cobblestone streets of the old town will transport you back in time and make you feel the charm of this typical stone village. Located on a hill between the mountains and the sea, you have a beautiful view over the Ritzenese Valley and even the coast. Good morning from Palombacha Beach. Behind me, we decided yesterday evening to come here to sleep because we know a good parking place and it's not easy to find around here. And so we decided now to come for an early morning walk by the beach. And if you can look behind me, you can even see far, far away Sardinia. We can also see it from here, which is really cool. And the plan today is not to stay in this beach because we have already been here two years ago. But we will afterwards go to Santa Giulia, which is also really beautiful and really known. And here in the area. So that's what we're gonna do. It was so good to be back in Palombaccia. We thought back to our first time there, in the crowds of the high season, at the most famous beach of the island. Now, with the serenity of the early morning, the sound of the waves and the sun rising, it almost felt like a different place.
We kept Santa Giulia for the end of our trip and our expectations were high. And we were blown away. Santa Giulia is one of Corsica's most beautiful beaches and it makes you question whether you are not somewhere in the Caribbean. The water is incredibly clear and blue and the kilometer-long beach lies picturesquely in a lagoon that is overlooked by a mountain. It's hard to describe, you just have to see it for yourself. Although it is not a secret tip, Santa Giulia is really worth a visit and needs to be on your Corsica bucket list. During this trip, we fell in love with Corsica all over again. We discovered a new facet of the island during our time on the west coast. Its nature is so raw, stunning and powerful. We've had the most challenging roads over here, but we also came across such wild and unique landscapes that it's hard to describe. We left with lots of new memories and a full heart. If you made it this far, thank you so much for being here. It means a lot. You can also support us by subscribing to this channel and following us on Instagram. See you on the road. Of course, it's not all perfect and one thing that makes us really sad is the amount of trash we found in many places around the island. This is the result. So far I have two bags of the trash that was here in the, park, the parking. This is really sad because there's so many trash that's here for many, many years. And if you camp, if you're a camper or not, you just take the trash with you. Because this, it has a huge impact in everyone. This is plastic that's gonna stay forever here.